Wolverhampton Wanderers have just secured Julian, 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 I don't know how to say the name. Let's just be, Julian, Julian Lopetegui. That's how I'm going to say it. Julian Lopetegui. But yes, Julian Lopetegui is the new Wolverhampton Wanderers head coach. Now, this really is a big appointment for me. We are talking a manager that has managed Real Madrid, uh, the Spanish national side, Sevilla, FC Porto, these are huge clubs, and now he's arrived at Wolverhampton, and I think it tells you something about the Premier League in terms of the stranglehold it has on Europe at the moment of the top managers. You look at all the managers in the Premier League, you look at Unai Emery, who's just come to Aston Villa. Huge names are coming to the Premier League, and I don't want to be disrespectful to clubs like Aston Villa, Wolverhampton, etc., but smaller clubs are even getting European level managers now, and I just think it's crazy, and this league is becoming more and more competitive. Um, for every single one of these new managers that we get, we get richer. I think he takes over on the 14th, which is just after the Arsenal game, which is their last game before the World Cup break. But when he takes over on the 14th after the Arsenal game, he's then going to have a month to work with some of his players. Um, a lot of his players aren't going to the World Cup. If you look at the squad, a lot of his players that he will be working with will be around. So he's going to have time to implement his new system. So here we have it. Um, Lopetegui is confirmed as the new manager of Wolverhampton. Um, a new chapter, it says that he will begin the role, as I said, on the 14th. Um, he's taken over Porto, Spanish national side, Real Madrid, Sevilla, as I've all said. <clears throat> and the Wolves chairman um, put out a statement saying, Julian is a top coach with excellent experience at the elite level of the game. And we are very pleased to have agreed a deal to bring him to Wolves. Since the beginning of since the very beginning, Julian. I'm just going to call him Julian because I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, Julian um, has been our number one choice to make as manager of Wolves. And we look forward to welcoming him and his team when they join us in the coming weeks. But yeah, I just I have a feeling that people don't understand fully the level of manager that Wolves are getting here. Um, it's quite cr it's quite crazy because he's he's been sacked at Sevilla. Um, in his last job, which we will get into, but <laughs> I just think it's such a good when you when a team like Wolverhampton uh, are, are employing a manager that's won European silverware, that is a big statement, and I think a lot of people might be glossing over it. Um, but this is a huge, huge appointment for Wolverhampton. Now, I've opened up this article because I wanted to um, share something with you guys. Um, so obviously here they've got his profile, um, goalkeeper, back in the day, uh, manager of Spain for two years, um, when he left on the eve of the World Cup due to joining Real Madrid, then he was just sacked 74 days later, as it says here, and then Sevilla, um, he won the Europa League with Sevilla, which, as I was saying before, I think it's just, it's such a big statement from Wolves. I just, I just, I can't get over it in my head. You know, being 19th in the Premier League and being able to attract a manager of Lopetegui's um, stature, I think it says a lot about the Premier League. It's kind of crazy because this is where a lot of people will judge him um, because he's taking over a side that are 19th. He's taking over a side that have scored six goals in the Premier League so far this season and they've not looked good. Um, attacking, Third, they look toothless. Defensively, they look open since switching from that back five um, under Bruno Large. So I think I think that there's a lot of work to be done with Lopetegui, but giving him this, this window of the World Cup to be able to work with his team and start to implement the foundations of what he wants to put forward, I think it's gonna be a very, very um, interesting time at Wolverhampton. But I wanted to cite some people, you know, obviously, when you're so focused on one league, like for me, I am with the Premier League. I, I do assess other leagues. I do try and look at other things, but sometimes you just get so caught up in the Premier League that you can't cover everything or see everything that goes on outside of the Premier League. So I think it's important to cite the people that watch Spanish football on a daily basis. But yeah, Lopetegui is one of the good Spanish coaches after the likes of Pep Guardiola and Unai Emery. We are talking about a very famous coach in Spain who has a lot of experience with Real Madrid, Spanish national team and Porto and Portugal. 
He's a good option for, first of all, mainly because he's an expert coach and he knows how to play and set up for different types of games. At Real Madrid, he didn't have a lot of time. He spent only four months. And after that, he said he wasn't able to work because the club didn't know what he wanted. However, I think he's going to do well in the Premier League because of experiences. The question about how he might adapt to relegation battle is a good question because he has coached very good teams in very good moments. We're talking about Sevilla, who won the Europa League, Spanish national team Real Madrid, but he hasn't been in a situation like Wolves find themselves in now. So I'm not going to go through the rest of it. But from what the sound is of what he's saying in this, um, in this interview, is that he's not taken over a side like Wolves before. Um, there is there is a lack of quality um, in certain aspects of Wolverhampton's game. This is just one of those those managerial appointments where you're just fascinated by. You know, I'm looking at it and I'm just going, I can't wait to see how Wolves set up after the World Cup break. So for me, I'm very excited for this 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 appointment and to to see what he does with this Wolves side. But it is interesting to me that the one time that I would say that Lopetegui seems like he has failed in his career has been at such a huge club in Real Madrid where if you're not up to the standard in terms of a very, very high ceiling, you know, we're talking about a, a, a club that is expecting to win La Ligas, expecting to win Spanish Cups, expected to win the Champions League on regular basis, which can be a huge responsibility and not something that I think we should judge uh, a Wolverhampton manager on because you look at the difference between a club like Real Madrid and Wolverhampton. As I said, the expectations of Real Madrid. You look at Wolverhampton, I think the expectation of Wolverhampton is to play good football and to hopefully challenge potentially for Europe. I think that's the expectations at Wolverhampton. And I think it's a lot more suiting to a manager. It's very different managing a club like Real Madrid to, to, to Wolverhampton, especially because of the expectations of the fans, you know. You look at even the top clubs in the Premier League, look at Conte at Spurs at the moment. You know, they're third in the league, yet people are screaming at, at, at Conte, is he, you know, asking the questions, is he doing enough? The third in the league. Oh, I think this is the number one um, way that we can assess whether he's going to be a success at Wolverhampton Wanderers. And I think we should look at Sevilla. And I think that's the perfect kind of, um, not analogy. <laughs> What's the word where, you know, you know when you're like comparing, uh, the comparison, would you believe it? Would you believe that was the word? It's blown my mind. But when you look at the finances that he was given at Sevilla and you look at the quality of squad and you compare it to Wolves, yes, yes, the squad, it was probably better at Sevilla. But if you look at the finances that a, a team like Wolves will be giving someone like Lopetegui, which I would assume that if you're making the appointment of Lopetegui, being in the relegation zone, you're gonna give him some funds to work with. And you could see a kind of era in the Premier League for Wolverhampton where they become a West Ham or a Leicester of the last few years, where they've been consistently up in that top 10, challenging for European places and, you know, having runs in Europe. And I think that's the point of this appointment. See the play on words there, but no. I think that is the point of the appointment. I do think that Wolves are looking for that kind of European push. Um, I think that's where they, they see themselves. And if they give Lopetegui the right funds, I think that it, it, it could really work. But how is Lopetegui going to set up at Wolverhampton? Now, I'm gonna do a video probably analyzing where I think, Lop, what, what, sorry, what I think Lopetegui will be doing with this side. Um, I'm also gonna do a video, uh, probably the same video, explaining players that might flourish under the um, the tenureship of Lopetegui at Wolves. But here, um, just in this small bit of analysis that I've um, I've read here, so apparently he's a lover of the 4-3-3, which I I've heard before. And by the sounds of it, it looks like he likes to play a number nine that has the abilities of someone like Roberto Firmino, who will drop deep and allow wingers to, to play inverted and um, score goals. Apparently he's also a manager that loves possession play. Um, he's a manager that likes to play out from the back, play high risk football for the high reward, um, which is a, a common theme in Spanish managers. But it will be interesting if he does opt for this false nine role as a striker, because here it highlights Adama Traore. But for me, Adama Traore is one of those players that doesn't score enough goals and probably doesn't assist enough goals either. So to be relying on him as a prolific winger would be a little bit of a worry for me. The one thing that Wolf fans are gonna love though is that Lopetegui does love to attack. 
He loves to play possession. He loves to go at the other team. And I think all fans these days, uh, I think that's something that a lot of fans crave, entertaining football. But do I believe this is a risk with Wolverhampton? Um, slightly so. And the reason why I believe there's a slightly risk is because although I do not believe that their side is at the quality to be in the relegation zone, you're employing a manager that has never been in a relegation zone before, has never understood what it's like to be in that situation. So when you take over a, a club that is currently in the relegation zone with only scoring six goals, um, if you do try to go in and play free flowing football and you concede a lot early, the heads could drop and it could go really wrong. So I do think there is actually a possibility that this appointment goes awfully wrong, but I'm more confident that it will go right. But overall, yes, I think this is a great appointment for Wolves. I think it shows their ambition. Um, and I think they're gonna, I think this appointment is them trying to push up further in the Premier League um, and challenging for European spots. Hopefully for them, it goes right. Um, I do think that it will, I think it will be a success. But there is that, as I said, there is that chance that it will not be a success and this could go horribly, ending with Wolves being relegated. So, you know, it's not a small, a bit, a bit of jeopardy that is, um, which is lying on this for Wolves, but I think most Wolf fans would be absolutely ecstatic with this appointment. And if I was, I would, I, uh, if I was a Wolves fan, I would be too. But that is all for the video. If there is anything that you think that I should improve about the content, drop it down in the comments. I'm always looking for new ways to improve the content. If you enjoy the content, hit the like button. And obviously, come on, hit the subscribe. Just does me a favor, isn't it? Anyway, see you in a bit. Peace.